An Italian lawmaker has formally nominated Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu for the Nobel Peace Prize, hours after Israel signed that landmark Abraham Accords agreement with Bahrain and the UAE. The Italian parliament member cited Netanyahu's diplomatic efforts to make peace, which include not just this week's peace treaty, he noted, but also Netanyahu's efforts in recent years to personally travel across the Muslim world and warm ties. President Trump is also nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize for brokering these Arab-Israel peace deals. The final list of nominees will be announced in October. The prize will officially be awarded by the end of the year. With me now is Middle East security analyst Dr. Emmanuel Navon. Your thoughts simply, do you think that Netanyahu deserves to win or share in the Nobel Peace Prize for the Abraham Accords? I believe so. I mean, if the, the purpose of the Nobel Peace Prize is to reward uh, statesmen who bring peace and who sign peace agreements, so definitely I think that this uh, peace agreement is what, that was signed this week is a very important uh, achievement uh, for the prime minister and also for the U.S. Uh, president. Uh, and uh, it is the first time in many years, I mean, since the peace agreement with uh, Jordan in 1994, uh, that a peace agreement is signed with two Arab countries, no less than two Arab countries uh, in, between Israel and those two countries. So I think, uh, yes, the, the prime minister definitely, I think, uh, should be awarded the, the Peace Nobel Prize together with the U.S. president and I think also the leaders of Bahrain and the uh, United Arab Emirates. What is your response to those who say, and we hear it here in Israel, even from Israeli lawmakers, that this can't count as peace? because these nations were not at war, and that uh, an honor like the Nobel Peace Prize, it should be reserved for someone who did something concrete to stop bloodshed, to stop an actual war. Well, factually, this is incorrect, because um, many people in the past have been granted uh, the Peace Nobel Prize without having made peace with countries with which uh, they were at war. I remind you that President Obama uh, was granted the uh, Peace Nobel Prize uh, at the very beginning of his term, uh, not having signed any or brokered any uh, peace uh, agreements. Uh, and uh, in the past, Israel signed peace agreements with Egypt and with Jordan. Technically, we were at war uh, with Jordan, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the last time Jordan and Israel had actually really fought against each other was during the 1967 uh, Six Day War. Uh, another important point is. Uh, that there's no requirement to be at war before. And, and the fact is that the uh, UAE and Bahrain were, in fact, uh, part of the, uh, of the uh, economic war against Israel uh, before that. And don't forget that after the Yom Kippur War, uh, those countries were very much active uh, in the, uh, in, in the uh, oil embargo against Israel, in the boycott of Israel. So even though uh, their tanks and our tanks never actually fought on the ground, uh, but they were technically at war with Israel. They supported the boycott and the isolation of Israel. Uh, and therefore, they left, the, they left this confrontation with Israel and now have actual peace agreements. So it is a peace agreement, even though we were not technically at war. Uh, we had uh, many disagreements. And as I said, those countries used to be part of the embargo, the oil embargo and the uh, boycott of Israel. What does this mean for Iran, seeing that the Gulf countries rapidly improving ties with Israel, letting Israeli planes fly over their airspace. What does it mean strategically vis-a-vis -vis Iran? It means that Iran is more and more isolated in the region. It means that the economic sanctions imposed by the Trump administration are actually working. Uh, it means also that the Sunni states of the region actually see Iran and its nuclear program as the bigger threat to their security. And they also realize that Israel uh, being the most powerful country of the region uh, is their most reliable ally against uh, against Iran. So I think that Iran, but by the way, not only Iran, but also Turkey, uh, which condemned those agreements, are more and more isolated in a policy of confrontation against Israel. Today, Israel has a de facto alliance uh, and peace agreements uh, with four Arab countries, Egypt, Jordan, the United Arab Emirates, and very soon uh, with Bahrain. And this goes to show that Iran's uh, uh, imperialistic policy and its uh, its use of proxies throughout the Middle East is actually uh, failing, 
uh, and that a new alliance is actually emerging around Israel and Sunni states against Iran, and this is a welcome move.